the Dauntless. He smiles as the door opens and a private stream leads in a Lyrac woman before coming to a stop with a stomp and salute. Sir, presenting Representative Velocity Crumble of the Therosite Republic, sir. Thank you, Private Stream. You may return to your duties. Admiral Cistern states and the over-eager Private's arm goes down and then rockets back up into a salute that jostles his hat. Representative Crumble outright snickers as he adjusts his cap in a hurry, salutes again, and then marches out. Even knowing it's an act, it's still adorable. The furry woman notes somewhat fondly and Admiral Cistern lets out a slight chuckle. That's the point. The first and most important thing a guard can do is de-escalate a situation so that violence doesn't even come up. No better way to be safe from a weapon than for it to be unused. Why is it that even in the little things you and your organization continue to confuse me? Perhaps because there's some form of misunderstanding, ma'am, Admiral Cistern asks, as he puts the final flourish on his last bit of paperwork and puts it into the outgoing pile. Now, how can I help you? Surely your bevy of spies and informants have already told you. Believe it or not, madam, I don't have my finger on the pulse of every single soldier under my employ. I assure their loyalty, instill the best morals I can, give a general direction and supply and pay them. I direct an entire organization with multiple parts. Intelligence is merely one of many. Oh, what takes up most of your attention? She asks, curious despite herself. Recruitment, although logistics is never far behind. Admiral Sister notes before pressing a button on his desk. Could we have refreshments for my guest and myself brought up, please? It will be there shortly, sir, is the response he gets and he smiles. Now then, madam, shall we begin to speak while we wait? He asks her and receives a smile. Yes, I believe we shall. Now, you've just told me that you're not fanatically observing your organization, and that's understandable. But do you know what your men have been up to in relation to the Therosite Republic whom I represent? I've read a few reports. One of your girls was caught and promptly compromised by Sir Philip snooping through my chambers in the council building. I told them to keep things friendly. We're looking for allies, not enemies. Has there been a deviation from that order? Do you have any idea exactly how friendly he's been keeping things? Madam, I have a 10-hour workday. Four of it is logistical. Three is dedicated to simple appeasement of innumerable governments and the remaining three are about putting out the endless small fires on the tactical, logistical, and political sides of things. Unless someone hands me a report, I have no idea. I have received no reports thus far about the developing situation. Admiral Sister notes. Oh, well, your agent decided the best way to defuse the situation was to offer up information freely, thereby compromising it, then give the infiltrator in question a birthday gift in the form of a date with one of your soldiers. God damn it, Philip, Admiral Cistern mutters to himself and then turns to glare as the butler appears as if summoned and places down a warm cup of blueberry tea and a carafe of coffee with a large bowl of cashews on the desk between the two. Sir, perhaps invoking the Lord's name in vain before a guest is unwise, Sir Philip asks in a teasing tone, and Admiral Cistern briefly entertains the idea of throwing the coffee pot at the man. It's usually funny, but right now he's just not in the mood for it. Hmm, my apologies, sir. I hadn't realized that you were so out of sorts. Then the older man walks out of the room and Admiral Cistern is positive that the moment the door closes, the man will be clear on the other side of the ship. Now then, what else has the old deviant been up to? That's just it. That's all he's done. I had to deal with a woman nearly breaking down because she can't understand just what the pits is going on. To say nothing of how much the operative in question is being repeatedly interrogated. I don't want to call him back mostly because right now I don't think I can deal with the smugness of the man. I was informed you two were good friends. Friends have off days, Admiral Cistern notes. 
Now, what else has he done? Nothing. He caught our spy, answered questions, and played matchmaker. He's off on one of his schemes again. Are you all right? Too much caffeine yesterday. I'm feeling it today. So his antics look a great deal less amusing while I'm fending off a headache. Admiral Cistern notes while rubbing the side of his head with two fingers. From the sounds of things he's doing what I've been calling an inversion, he's making you second-guess yourselves by being completely upfront and honest in several areas. This makes your intelligence operatives waste their time pursuing non-existent deceptions and conspiracies for a minimum of effort on his part. Even better, it sets him up to easily send your agents onto what's called a wild goose chase, which means that that he can send my agents off on false leads by planting evidence one way or another. Yes. Or he set things up so he could use your agency to go after targets that he wants to have taken down but cannot spare the resources to go after himself. Or doesn't want to risk his own operatives. Exactly. The man is a living legend for a reason. He's not only a nearly unstoppable agent, but his tactical acumen, ability to read people and improvise massively effective plans with only a few moves is, well, you're caught up in one of his schemes. Yes, yes I am, Representative Crumble says, taking her tea and after letting a chemical scanner do its work, she blows on it and takes a sip. How did he know we have a trinity of Gravia data analysts? I beg your pardon? Sir Philip's scheme is still in motion. He sent a specific soldier on a date with our infiltrator. She was then invited onto your ship and witnessed him dueling with an empty handmaster using a technique that has the best data analysts we have on Centris going borderline insane with curiosity. Oh dear, you think he's still compromising more of your agents? Something like that. I've never seen the 420 sisters act this way before. Cultural accents aside, they're some of the most rational and composed women I know. But now... All right, that's it, Admiral Cistern states. Private stream, fetch Sir Philip and some aspirin, on the double. Aspirin? A pain reliever. If the headache won't go away, I'm going to at least dull it. Admiral Cistern notes wryly and Representative Crumble smirks. You're reminding me of when my son got his first job. He was nearly murderous after just a week, she says with a fond recollection that's tinged with regret. How did it end? Admiral Cistern asks softly, sensing that things are delicate, but it would be better to know. He's still in therapy. The way the galaxy works doesn't for him. He has a fragile ego and he just, he doesn't take things well. I'm sorry to hear that, Admiral Cistern says genuinely. However, he does wonder why she brought it up to him. He's been cordial, accommodating, and polite, but that certainly doesn't rate him as close enough for that level of sharing. I'll explain further after we're done with the old deviant, Representative Crumble says, and Admiral Cistern nods even as Sir Philip walks in. I don't think I quite rate that level of vitriol, ma'am. Sir Philip notes with a smile, he then places a bottle of water and a bottle of aspirin on the desk. Thank you, Sir Philip. Admiral Cistern notes as he quickly downs two of the pills and drains half the water to wash it down clean. Now then, myself and Representative Crumble here are growing rather concerned at just how much of a game you're playing with her intelligence agency. Something about the 420 sisters. Simple, sir. We're not actually doing anything morally objectionable by Therocyte Republic standards. Culturally, they would be an ideal ally as it would take little to no effort on either of our parts to integrate with each other. Therefore, I'm getting the ball rolling on making that as obvious as possible. So I played matchmaker with a person who is rather appealing to most of the fetishes of the Therocyte Information Agency here on Centris. You're joking. Representative Crumble states in mute awe and horror. I am not. The only part of this plan that has caught me off guard even slightly is that the empty handmaster Maylon took a liking to him as well. 
Thankfully, our good friend Adagoki was able to break the ice between the two so thoroughly that she is as closely tied to Quartermaster Maji as much as Miss Jatsa. You're under direct orders to lay out this entire bag of snakes completely straight, Admiral Cistern says in a tone of resigned exasperation. Yes, sir. After encountering and gaining a small amount of relevant information on Miss Jadza Tarn, I sent her off with the non-classified information she was looking for. I then took the opportunity of discovering the location of her agency and quickly did a judgment of all the women working there, of which there are just under a hundred bachelorettes, and I found out after a short study of their personalities and proffered likes and dislikes, we have no less than four soldiers that would effectively fulfill the personal preferences, physically, mentally, emotionally, or personality-wise of all the unmarried women in the organization. After some consideration, I put in motion a plan so that Quartermaster Modan Maji would effectively serve as a very solid link to the Therosite Republic. An old man playing matchmaker is twisting my entire intelligence agency into knots. Representative Crumble groans into her hands. She seems to get an idea and then brings out her chemical scanner to examine the bottle of aspirin. Damn, I could use a headache reliever. Apologies, madam. I can fetch some Lyrac-appropriate headache medicine if it would serve, Sir Philip offers. Please. Representative Crumble states, and in short order, Sir Philip has left the room. I can order him to stop. Not without backlash. An old man playing matchmaker between nationals of two states is something out of a romance serial and not politics, Representative Crumble says with a groan. So it would look absurd to oppose it, Admiral Sister notes. How many unmarried women are in your intelligence agency? More than four. I know that much. Representative Crumble answers without answering. I see. And these 420 girls. Why the hesitation when you say that number? It's a code word for the consumption of cannabis, a plant that, if grown in a proper method, has a number of intoxicants in it. It can be used as an extremely effective painkiller, but it has a poor reputation due to it being used recreationally. Admiral Cistern explains. Oh, no, they're, they're very serious and focused. But something about Quartermaster Maji has set them off immensely. They're giggling, eager, and very much want to meet him. Quartermaster Maji is a part of the Nerd Squad, a group of passionate Axiom researchers. Apparently his project is far from complete, but what's been seen must have impressed them. He has developed a technique that some have crudely described as him becoming half gravia in order to properly utilize it, Sir Philip says, walking back into the room with another bottle of water and a bottle of medicine for Representative Crumble labeled as Vari brand painkillers. Representative Crumble scans the bottle before taking two from the bottle and using water to help down it. Just ask for Private Stream if you need anything more, sir. Good day, madam, sir. Sir Philip says as he leaves the room and Admiral Cistern sighs. The aspirin has fully kicked in and the headache is mostly relieved. Thank goodness. Very good now. I got the hint that you brought up your son for a reason. We're not anywhere near close enough for you to share such things with me unless you think I can help you with them. Your military is one of the largest concentration of men on centrists of independent men with a sense of pride and self-worth. Do you know any way to help reinforce my son's ego and teach him not to lash out as much as he does? If he wasn't a man, he would already have been arrested several times and I'm not sure how to help him. His therapist is telling me to indulge him over and over and it will get better, but it's just not working. I see, Admiral Cistern states. In my experience, Nothing gives a man a better self-image than a worthy purpose gainfully pursued. I see. She echoes him as she clearly starts thinking. Now, seeing as how we're foreign nationals and he's the son of a high-ranking representative, it would be a minor scandal to recruit him into our ranks. However, that doesn't mean we can't help him. After all, 
Who better to have as one of the representatives to a polity that's composed of many men than another man? So you think having him as a representative to you would help him? Yes, especially if he can make some lasting friendships. It doesn't matter how personally introverted or shy someone is, everyone needs someone to trust, peers and friends, Admiral Cistern states before smirking. Even if you don't always get along, there's just no one around him to bond with. Every woman close to him is either family or a wife. He, hmm. There are several buildings not too far from the Dauntless that have been converted into recreational facilities for the men. They're open most hours of the day and often full of men. He could find someone to connect to there. I see. Thank you for your time, Admiral Cistern. I, I'm not quite happy with everything happening but I'm no longer feeling threatened by it. Annoyed, certainly, but no longer threatened, she says as she grabs a few cashews from the bowl and chewing on them before her eyes light up. Take the bowl with you and have good day, madam. I'm glad our little talk was so productive. Admiral Cistern states and Representative Crumble nods, even as she grabs a proper handful to eat.